Okay, so I've received quite a bit of feedback in regards to the um, Hacking Wireless Networks videos to the point where it's pretty much overwhelming. As you can see, my inbox is ridiculously full right now. Um, I normally have my Gmail transferred to my Yahoo account. And um, just a majority, probably about 80% of my um, notifications that come in are from people posting comments saying, you know, I can't get this working. And it's usually fairly redundant saying that their um, Airmon NG doesn't show an interface and their adapter isn't functioning within Backtrack. So rather than taking the time to literally respond to every single message, and I've pretty much given up on responding to comments for that particularly, but um, rather than doing that, I'm going to just make a video going over everything that needs to be done and just reference people to this video. Um, first thing first, uh, as many people have already stated, the um, wireless adapter for functionality within VMware, you need to have an external wireless adapter. Now, I did have an internal wireless adapter for mine, and it did function. In, in some cases, um, an integrated wireless adapter will function within VMware, but more often than not, it will not. So, if you have an integrated, and you start up your virtual machine, and you don't see it under your removable devices, you don't see a wireless adapter or find another network adapter or something like that to indicate that it's connected then the issue is it's not compatible with VMware which means that you'd have to find an alternative um, two alternatives would be one either getting a new network adapter that is compatible or two booting off a live disk or installing it to your hard drive and I'm going to go and show you how to create a live disk as well really quick let me see if I can find it uh, here we go so when you if you go to the Backcheck website, and let me go and open this up here really quick, and this goes for any OS really. If you go to the Backcheck website, go to the Downloads tab. It should be the fourth over. You'll see a variety of different images you can download. The VMware image is basically our already configured virtual machine, and you want to avoid that because that's not what you're going to be using. You want to get the ISO. It'll just be your standard uh, final release at the very top. Just download this. And once you've downloaded it, you should have an ISO. And let me bring mine up here. Yeah, just like this. It might be named differently. And all you do, depending on if you're using Windows 7 and whatnot, Windows 7 has a burn option. So you can literally just left-click on burn and sort of disk, and you're good to go. Uh, all the other alternatives are using a program like Power ISO, which I have installed. Um, you can just simply do a Google search for... Um, For ISO burners spelled correctly of course and you'll see a, a whole listing of different ISO burners it really doesn't matter um, some things to note though with the latest backtrack you're gonna need a DVD disk because it does exceed the maximum capacity of a CDR um, so you want to burn it to a C, uh, DVD-R um, if you have any issues when booting from the DVD make sure you boot it at, or burn it at a lower write speed anywhere between four to eight usually will suffice and the reason being is that this the Linux images tend to get corrupted really easily during the burns and I'm not too sure why that happens but it does happen and once you've done that once you burn it to a disk you can simply restart your computer and upon reboot you should be prompted to boot off that disk if you're not you can enter your system BIOS um, normally it'll be like F12, F2, delete one of those keys depending on your model you can do a Google search for that as well and uh, once in the BIOS, you just need to configure um, your boot sequence. Make sure your CD drive set to number one. And in most cases, it's already set to that. Now, if you are using an external wireless adapter and it's still not functioning for some reason, there are a few things you can try. Um, first off, it's always best to make sure you are using the current version, whether it be VMware Workstation or VMware Player. Um, next thing you need to do is also make sure you have the proper services running. If you're running on XP or Vista, um, Windows 7, it shouldn't matter. Just go to your run field and type in services.msc. Hit enter and it should bring up a list of services running on your computer. And if you scroll down to the Vs, you should see a bunch of VMware services. Um, the important services to have running, of course, well, I mean, really you should have all the services running. The agent service isn't as important, nor is the authorization service. Um, but these, these three primarily are very important to have running. And if they're not running, you can simply right-click and start, start, or you can also restart it. A common issue some people have is with the USB operation service not properly loading. You'll get an error message when you boot the, uh, the virtual machine. Or if you try to start the service, you'll get a, an error message. And there's a few fixes posted on the VMware website. I'll go ahead and go over a couple. Um, generally, the issue occurs because um, previous USB driver is conflicting. Um, if you did some hardware upgrades or any kind of major changes to your system, that could cause it.
Um, sometimes a simple reboot can fix it, but even after a reboot, you still face the issue. What you'll want to do is open your registry editor. That's uh, start, run, reg, edit. And once within your registry editor, you'll go to your H key local machine key and expand it down to system. From within system, you're going to go to current control set. From current control set, you'll switch over to, it's going to be control. And then within the control, you want to scroll down until you find class, which is right here. And it's going to be a specific class key. It's going to be 36, this one right here. It's going to be 36FC9E60. It's going to be ending in this long character here. It should be the same on every system. And now within here, you're going to see um, an upper filters key. And in there, the data field is going to be populated with, um, it's going to say USB filter. So if you just right click on that string, select modify, just delete that value of um, USB filter and click OK and it should remove itself from here and once you've done that what you also want to do is you want to bring this back up and under the uh, current control set uh, which you should already be in you want to go to services this time and expand services and if you scroll down here you should see a uh, you should see a USB filter string you can just locate it left click on it, and just press the delete key and remove that whole string now once you've done it you can go and close out your registry editor and you also want to open up your Explorer, your Windows Explorer, so just um, my computer, I suppose. Go to your C drive, go to Windows, go down to System32. From within System32, you want to open the Drivers folder. And under Drivers, you should see a usbfilter.sys file. Go ahead and highlight it, delete it, and reboot your system afterwards. That should resolve the USB arbitration service error. Now, once that's all done with, some, ish, um, some ways to get your adapter working, if you are using an external adapter, you're confident it does work with VMware, and you want to just, somehow it's just conflicting, you want to see if you can get it working. There's a few things you can try that I've, I've found in my experience that does sometimes work. It's kind of iffy, but we can go ahead and try it anyways. What you want to do is first open up your control panel, and from within the control panel, you're going to open network and internet. Um, if you're using XP, it should just be uh, network connections if you're using Classic View. Um, but ultimately, that's where we're going to go to. We're going to go to the uh, network connections, your network uh, adapter listings. Now, you'll see here you have um, a couple of VMware network adapters. You may just have one, two, even more than that sometimes. And essentially what these do, um, generally when you're using a wireless adapter, is when you launch, these virtual connections will actually bridge with your host connection, um, depending on how you have it configured in your virtual machine. Now, sometimes um, when you boot up, they just don't properly bridge or they just conflict in some way. And a few things you can do is if you open up your virtual machine, first thing first, it does help if you plan on using wireless to disable your um, wired adapter. And you should see a network adapter here. You can just disconnect, actually go to settings as well and just uncheck these. Okay, and try booting with just a wireless adapter. See if that works. If it still doesn't work, though, you can come back to here. And you can actually di disable all three of those devices. If you um, highlight both of these, right click, or actually you have to do it independently. Just disable, disable, and then disable your wireless connection. All three should just be disabled. And you want to make sure your virtual machine is closed out. Once your virtual machine is closed out, all those are disabled. Go ahead and re-enable them, essentially doing a power cycle, and then boot up the virtual machine and see if it functions for you. If all that fails, then you're pretty much, you know, you're going to have to take a different route with it. For those that do have issues with their adapter within Backtrack as is, um, even if you boot off a live disk, you still have issues. Chances are it's not compatible with Backtrack or it needs a patch driver. Um, to, ver check, to determine whether or not this is the issue, three things you can do. First is go to the Backtrack website and see if um, it's listed as a compatible card or if there's any issues with it. There's a listing here on their old website that has a whole listing of all the cards. Um, you can go, I'll put this address into the description. There's also uh, one for Aircrack. I'll put this list into the description as well, which you can reference. And also, third option would be to, of course, just do a simple Google search. Um, type in your network adapter, backtrack, and put backtrack in as a keyword. And it should pull up some results if there is any kind of compatibility issues and whatnot, as well as um, steps needed to get it working. That should cover everything. I think at this point we're good, and hopefully that proves useful to many of all. Have a great day.